Hi, I'm Haley. I graduated in 2019. Today, I want to talk to you about personal finance and my whole take on the basics of starting to make friendship with finance. Once finance enters your life, it doesn't leave. Even if you stop earning, you'll have your savings with you, and you need to figure out what to do with them. I learned very little about it in all of my education. That's why I want to make this video for people who have either just started to earn or who are going to start their financial career. Number one, how to decide what is the goal to start your earnings to understand. how much you want to start earning you need to understand three different aspects your very basic needs number 2 your wish list and the third category is expenses that will help your business or job grow coming to the first thing which is your basic needs what does that include it includes anything and everything that come under food clothing and shelter by forgetting food further it includes your grocery bills your dairy bills if you have a cook at home it includes those bills in clothing you should keep enough funds aside to change your clothing every quarter and for shelter if you pay any maintenance or if you have a home loan shelter will also include anything like electricity maid expenses so on and so forth do remember there's a lot of occasional things like repairs when your ac breaks down you'll have to get that repaired when you're starting out if you're living by yourself in a different city or in the same city you can keep these house expenses only for you first and then you can start contributing for your parents as well if they are financially independent already if they're not you can of course help them from the beginning once you're done with yourself do make it a point to help your parents out too they are getting old and if we support them it will mean the world to them coming to the second category which was the wish list i'd recommend to keep 60 to 70% of the wish list in the affordable category affordability is very subjective now 100 rupees can be affordable for someone and can be very expensive for someone else so don't be ashamed of if specific amount is expensive for you the more items you keep checking off the wish list the more satiated you will become and the less desires you will get the more unattainable you keep your wish list the more it will keep making you run behind money all your life not get satisfied even while doing that 20 to 30 with an max of the wish list can be something that is very very expensive for example in my that 20 to 30% right now comes a house and a house in the same building as my parents goes in crores and crores of rupees which i'm not close to but that's the only expensive thing on my wish list everything else comes under a category which even today i can buy coming to the third category which is expenses which will help your business grow these are again subjective how to make those expenses is by calculating the roi roi is return on investment roi changes every now and then i can give an example of buying a new piece of equipment i recently purchased this mic and the mic helps my sound be more clearer while i'm talking to you or while you know we're just trying to connect but the reason why i never purchased this long ago is i never saw the return on it you need to be smart and that way your business will grow faster and you're using your money more wisely while understanding exactly what is the thing going to help you why should we understand this what is the whole point do we really get the choice to take a career that we enjoy or are we slaves of the availabilities of jobs and we just have to pick one that's already available now personally i feel like it's a mixture of both it's about the right timing if you are looking at starting earning at an xyz amount of time then you will have to choose from what's already available because setting up something that you enjoy takes time it's not a one day process it's not a definite time bound process for someone it could take a day but for someone it could take 2 to 3 years as well my personal advice would be that if you have already found your passion start to make it a career while you're still studying being that way once you graduate you already have a base ready that is what happened in my case because very early on i had understood that this is what i enjoy and i want to have a base set enough that by the time i graduate i am earning enough money to fulfill my basic needs however if it takes a time to find passion don't worry it's very normal and you might even change your passion after a few years in that case you can take a job that's available right now which will make you financially self sufficient while you're still doing your job you'll have to find the time to pursue your passion at least for Six months, your money should be coming in consistently enough to pay for your basic needs, and that's when you can make the switch. According to me, not a hard and fast rule, but this is what I'd recommend. You have found the career that you really enjoy. Let's assume your basic needs are done. Your wish list is also getting checked, like one item every quarter or one item a year. What do we do with the extra money even after the wish list and business expenses? You should save. You should invest. But let me tell you my personal story of how I found the right people whom I trust with my money and with the knowledge to understand. where i want to put my money first person who comes to my mind is my father because he's been a very prudent saver what i mean by that is he start saving like early on when i was just born he started saving for my education by the time my mba was supposed to happen he'd saved the entire fees already and that is why i wasn't under the burden of a student loan now that i need to invest i ask him this is what he told me the more assets i build the better that is why in my wish list majority of the items are asset prone and not liability prone What's a 
an asset and what's a liability this is very very basic an asset is if i ever want to sell it off i'll get good money for it and what's a liability something that will depreciate like Past. So my car is a liability and the mobile phone is a liability. Unfortunately, even my camera equipments are liability because they come under technology. The reason why a house is on my wish list because when I go to sell it off, if I ever want to, I will get the money I paid for it or it might just appreciate too. You can have jewelry on your wish list if you really like it. Real silver rings are actually quite affordable because I bought two rings for around 500, 600 rupees. If I want to sell it, I can get the money back. Second thing he taught me is to invest because there's this thing called inflation. What inflation in layman's term if this bottle costs rupees 500 today tomorrow this exact same thing is going to cost 5000 so if you saved 500 today thinking that you're gonna buy the same thing for 500 a few years later that's not gonna happen eventually your 500 is actually becoming rupees 50 in a few years time that is why he keeps asking me to invest in the right places where the return is more than the inflation for example if the inflation is 10% the money should on its own become 14% more or 15% more so that that 4 5% is still our savings that that is our actual savings, not the 14%. He has a person who's been handling his portfolio for 20 plus years and that's why majority of my savings is with them right now. What I strongly believe is we need to be updated with the latest methods because when my dad invested in mutual funds, it was very new. He did reap the benefits because it was a new thing and he went for it. Two of my best friends are in the finance field. Imani, my bestest friend, sister, everything and Kumar, my boyfriend, my best friend, my partner, everything. So Kumar is pursuing MBA in finance. So I go to them too to understand what's the new it thing in the finance world they won't take up my portfolio until they're 100 confident so that's why i'm with dad right now you should only go to those people whose success story you've seen and whom you trust completely not with speculation because i have seen a lot of people suffer due to speculation and just like losing money people who think that it's only a satta bazaar where you know one day you'll win one day you lose that's not how finance works it has to be planned calculated understood before you you know make a leap into it now your investments are done you've been earning for a lot of years and let's say maybe you're 40 or 50 or even 30 you want to retire but how to feel financially secure before you retire when will you truly be financially free and independent for life this was a question that was coming to my mind after just a few years of earning is this what i want to go on forever till i die i don't want to have the tension of thinking ki will there be food on my and my loved one's plate a few years later if something like what's happening right now happens aapke sare calculations but I'm talking about the day when all of this is gone, we're back to normal life, which we are going to come. Where's the scenario may how to become financially free? Recently, I found the answers. What is your ultimate financial goal? How much do you want to earn before you retire? I found that answer in an amount, the interest of which will pay for all my basic expenses, a few of the wish list items. That's all. What you have to take into account is that all the other major life changes you'll make. If you do plan to get married, then you need to add that to it. If you plan to have children, you need to add that to it. Of course, your parents and your loved ones' expenses too to that fund. Wo amount, suppose, aaj 50,000 aati hai. 30 years later, wo kitni hogi. And then, you need to find that final amount. If you want that to be the interest, then what does the principle need to be? And that principle is my amount of being financially free. That's what currently I'm working towards to build that one amount. Just says if interest earn karke, amare basic expenses definitely nikal jayenge. Taki there will never be the pressure of having the basic needs. And then, I can just make more videos and more vlogs and yeah that's the goal before we end this video i want to answer the one question that's most frequently asked and that is at this age how did we manage to buy that car and move out don't i feel scared to pay expenses every single month i have this one ground rule before buying anything on emi if i don't have the entire sum of money with me already i will never take a thing on emi emis can be very lucrative even before i bought the car which cost 5 lakh rupees i had the whole 5 lakh rupees ready with me then why didn't i pay it why did i still take it on emi this credit after to go to Kumar because he was like, you need to take it on EMI. The interest was like 60,000 rupees more. And I'm like, Kumar, if I'm spending 60,000 extra, then how am I saving money? At that time, what he explained to me is the car cost 5 lakhs. I paid 2 lakhs as down payment and I did not pay the remaining 3 lakhs. That 3 lakhs is to be deferred over a period of 5 years. How we end up saving is by not paying 3 lakhs today itself, if we invest it elsewhere, we're going to be making more than the 60,000. These are all approximate figures, but this is the concept I'm trying to explain to you. And when it comes to expenses like moving out, I did 
not move out until I had saved the rent of one whole year. It's the same thing with hiring a new employee on the team. I do not hire until I know for sure that I have the savings ready for the whole year, but I do not make the next big plunge until at least one year ka wo expense save karke rakha ho. And that's how I don't get the pressure of paying this month's rent or next month's rent because the savings is already there. This is my personal financial journey so far. I'm not the most knowledge person in finance at all, but I wanted to spark a conversation about this topic. I do think it will help someone out there. If you have any questions about finance, do leave them in the comment section below. And I'd love to get the answers from Dad or Sehimani and Kumar. Or if they're comfortable, you can just get them to answer your questions directly on episode 2 of this whole financial series. But I do hope you found this helpful. If you enjoyed watching this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for future videos on this topic. And if you did not enjoy this video, Pindas, give it a thumbs down. I will see you in a brand new video very, very soon. Until then, goodbye!